Hello, it's Sarah, and I'm going to do another 411 on polymer clay. Um, I want to do it more detailed because I've been getting a lot of questions, and I may just take out, take off my old one because I didn't really go over a, a ton of stuff. Uh, polymer clay is a medium that I love. Um, I, I got into it to make mosaics, and um, it's a very versatile uh, medium, and I'm going to share what I use. Now, this is what I use. I am no expert. I think I've been doing this about three years now. Um, I choose to use Sculpey 3 and Sculpey Primo clay. There are other. There's Cato and um, I can't even think of all the other names, but uh, these are readily available to me in my in craft stores, in my local craft stores. So that's why, and I like them. Um, Primo specifically because it's a bit firmer. Sculpey is very soft, so if you're just playing like with kids or um, it's it's easy to work with. Primo's a Primo is still soft. It's not um, hard, um, but it just tends to hold its shape a little better, I think. Um, and these type, this type of clay needs to be baked. So it'll stay soft. I mean, I when I'm using it, so when I, I've been in clay mode for a while, it's just been sitting out for like a week like this because I'm using it kind of every day. Um, and it's fine. It's soft and it, it doesn't harden necessarily. I mean, yeah, if it's old, it probably does. But until you bake it, um, you, can, you can work it, you can condition it into workable clay. Um, okay, so that's what I use. Um, now, there are some tools that you may want to get, um, but that being said, when I first started, I took a class with Lori Micah, and we were making these tiles. And they're just individual, I'll show you, I have some here. And she actually literally uses a rolling pin to roll her clay out on like a piece of wax paper. Now I have tiles because we we have um, leftover tiles from tiling uh, projects that we've done around the house. And my husband actually cut me tile pieces like this that fit right into my oven. And I use a toaster oven and I'll get to that. I'll show you mine at the end. Um, but I like working on a tile. You really, you, you, could, you can work on any surface, um, but I left clay on my dining room table one time, just raw clay sitting on the table, and it will eat through your varnish. Um, I don't know what's in here. There's polymers, and I don't know. But uh, so you should have a piece of glass or tile um, to work on, or or a piece of wax paper. You know. Um, so let me I'm starting to my desk is going to get busy here. So like I was saying, um, Lori Micah actually rolls her clay out with a rolling pin and she conditions it all by hand. Now when you condition it, it comes in a package like this and to work with it, it's a block. You need to get it soft. So she'll just start to go back and forth in her hand and get it warm and it'll start to break down and blend and move and get into a uh, workable piece of clay um, and the way to work around that is to have a pasta machine now they call them a pasta machine mine's hooked to the desk here I should have it has a clamp that clamps it onto the desk so when you cr crank the crank it won't uh, fall or whatever so this is actually I believe this is made for polymer clay and it has a crank here I know there's an electric one too um, and this wheel over here, I have, it actually goes up to nine. I was wrong. I always say 10, but there's nine settings and it moves the rollers further away and closer together. So when you push the clay through there, it will um, create. So you just have to make sure it'll fit between the rollers and it creates a sheet of clay. Okay. So I, you know, use a coupon. You can get these at your craft stores in the clay aisle. Usually they're on the bottom or up above. You know, they're not in plain sight a lot of times. 
um, but that's what I use to get my um, sheets of clay consistent all the time. Look at that, that's pearl, purple pearl clay, so pretty. Um, and when I'm embedding things in the clay, I use a thicker setting, and when I'm just stamping on clay, you can use a thinner setting. Um, all right, so let me, okay, so that's clay. The clay, is, and then you have to bake it. And the baking instructions, where did I put my big, the baking instructions are on the packaging. Let me see, on the Primo, this one. Here, for Primo, it's 275 for 30 minutes per quarter inch. It says it right there. So just look around your package. On this one, it's the Sculpey, it's 275, so the same, um, degrees. This one's just a little quicker, 15 minutes per quarter inch. And it says it right on the packaging. So that's the basics on the clay itself. You have to condition it, meaning get it, work all those, they, the polymers, that's the plastic inside the clay. And I guess they're particles and you have to get them to move to, now listen, I'm no expert. There are other videos that may know the science of polymer clay better than I do. But when it bakes, if it's, if it's consistent throughout because you've conditioned it, I think you'll have a better end result. Okay, that's probably the whole thing about that. Um, okay, so we talked about a tile to roll your clay out and to then work with your clay. I always use a tile because this can go right in the oven. So if I'm working on something, I can just pick it up and put it right in the oven. I don't have to pick up the clay. Um, I have tools now. You don't need a ton. You can use things from around the house, all right? I don't want you to have to go thinking you have to go buy a bunch of stuff. Um, and this has been over three years and I do have a budget to buy crafting supplies. So, you know, if you're on a budget, make sure, you know, always use coupons um, and stuff like that and get it on sale. The, I, always, I still, even though I have a budget for it, I love to use a coupon. I get clearance items. I, you know, I search for things. Um, so that being said, this is what I have. This is just an acrylic roller because I do still use this to add texture I, I use it to, I use it, okay? Um, this is a fancy tool. I never use this thing, but I have used it. It's by Sculpey, and it has these little texture wheels on it that you can pop on and off, and I have used it, and I've made strips of clay in that design, and it's very cool. I have lots of refills on that. Um, but you need a blade. You definitely need a blade. And this, you could probably get a starter set of tools at Michael's um, by Sculpey. A lot, Sculpey puts out a lot of tools. Um, you're going to need a blade. Oh, look, my X-Acto knife is in there. I, I just use your everyday X-Acto knife. I like to use this. It's, a, it's handy for cutting. I can make leaves with it. I can do a bunch of stuff with a blade. But you need a blade. Um, and let me see, oh, a ball tool, definitely a ball tool, and this is the Sculpey 3-pack, and I recently got this. I didn't even have this, this set for a long time, and I just used my stylus. Um, this is a stylus, it's because I've had this in my stash for painting, and using for making dip dots and all types of cool stuff. It's just a ball tool. Um, but Sculpey makes one and it has a set of three, a really small one, a medium one, and a large one. And you can use this rounded metal edge to smooth your clay and blend one seam into another. So a ball tool is a good tool to have. Um, and then I have just a pokey tool, but you can use a toothpick. But I do have a pokey tool. I have a couple of these. Um, these are new, these are the, the etch and pearl tools, and I do like them. I mean, I don't use them a ton, but I'm starting to feel like I can use them for more things. I actually made my holes in my sign that I just made, my polymer, um, my welcome sign for my fairy door outside with this one, um, but you don't need them. They're, it's just, you know, this, I actually paid quite a bit for the, um, 
I like this one though. These are uh, steampunkery. What is her name? Christy Friesen. Christy Friesen's stainless steel. See, this is the other Sculpey tool. This is like a ball. They, they, a lot of these came in a set. I think that one, this one, the black handle ones are all by Sculpey. But look, I even have these. These are your cheapest ones. And I've been going to this a lot more for when I do my leaves because it's not as sharp as a blade, but you get a nice indention to make um, the little marks on your leaves. I use this purple tool a lot and I have a knife too. These, this is, these are great for um, when I do my painted tiles, these, because I want to make a line, I want to make an indent there, but I don't want it to go all the way through the clay, and it just makes the perfect size where I can fit my jelly roll pen right in that notch. So these plastic ones, which are probably the cheaper, cheaper ones, are pretty good. I mean, or, but maybe you could just find a plastic knife. The plastic knives that I always find are serrated, which that's fine too. I mean, it's just going to make a little like serrated line on your clay. I have a tongue depressor in here. Don't know why. I have a, this is for mica powders. I have toothpicks, lots of toothpicks because I use those to do, oh, I like this little blade. So I have like, I have a set of probably like four blades in here. Look, there's four blades. Um, and then I have this big one. This is the one that Maya uses, my granddaughter, when we're doing clay because it has handles and she feels more secure using that, all right? So, like I said, you just go to the clay aisle. I didn't say that. <laughs> and um, you'll see all this stuff. I don't have an extruder. I don't have, there's lots of things I don't have as well. Um, and not to say I will never have them because I love to try new things. But for right now, the tools I have, I'm not even using what I have. I was I started to say these are Christy Friesen's tools. And I do, I love this one. This one is just, I don't know. They're stainless steel. She calls them certain things. But I'm not a sculptor. So I don't really know what they're for. And I paid a lot of money for them. And you don't need them. You can use whatever. But I mean, not that they're not great. I'm sure they're great. She uses them, and I think she loves them. Um, all right, so those are the tools. A blade. You need a blade. And, you know, something probably to kind of smooth your lines with, like a ball tool or some piece of, like, you know what? A lot of times, I think, this one's all bunged up, but people use sticks like this. And I've got paint all over this one and stuff, but... I mean, there's a ton of stuff you can use. I'm going to put this back over here. Um, all right, so those are the tools. And you don't, like I said, get what's on sale and get what, when you have a coupon, get a nice set. If you have a coupon, go get the set of the blades, the, all this, there's like a, probably a 10-piece set or something for, and use a coupon, and that's all you're going to need for, you know, to, to make some decent, um, stuff. Uh, so what else? All right. Um, molds. Let me just talk about molds a little bit. I have this out here and I want to go get, I also have this one. This is a fondant mold. And these are, let's see who these are by. I'm going to say this one's Sculpey. This one is Amico, and I think that's who makes my, um, that's the name that's on my, uh, this is the moon mold, that's on my pasta machine, Amico. And I think these are all Sculpey. Oh, it says it right here. Polyform. Polyform. But I think that's Sculpey. I think Polyform is Sculpey. This says Maureen Carlson. Amico again. This is another Amico one. Oh, here it is. Polyform. This one's Polyform Productions. Um, these are molds and they're silicone, so they're flexible. Now these are by Martha Stewart and I'll put a link. Um, I can't think of the name of it. There's a great online store. Um, anyway, 
I'll put I'll put some links in the description box but I got these at Michael's but I don't think they're selling her um, molds anymore um, they have tons of these these are in the cake aisle these are the fondant molds and they have tons of different ones of these um, in all your local craft stores and I've been using this one lately for just these little flowers these dogwood flowers but there's leaves on here birds and like a trim because it's for a cake you know so you would do put a trim there's you know so I mean oh this one I got I think it's called um it was from polymer clay adventure and I can't think of the name of their uh well, there's a little symbol there but it's um, angel wings so there's lots of different molds out there that you can use and they are fun but again like see I, I used the under the sea mold for this little guy and it's just got um, I made the coral and I made the sand and I made the um, seaweed by hand I also made this uh, jellyfish by hand but this two three four five so all those are from the mold and so it's just handy and easy uh, tool to have if you want to do a certain theme okay so a mold is a good way to go um, what else texture sheets these are some texture sheets that I have and they're by Makins and I have quite a few I just went to Hobby Lobby the other day and they sell these um, and they have a lot of different sets of them and you can get them in sets I think there's probably like three or four to a set and um, they're great for making texture the two I've been using lately are my wood grain because I've been doing a lot of fairy doors and the sand which I just like because it adds texture to your stones but I have snowflakes and stars oh this cobblestone one is awesome too I have checkers and dots and scales and screen and stripes so there's a ton of those available to you but you could probably use things around the house to make texture on your thing on your you know a piece of screen a piece of anything that has texture can be put onto the clay and um, so look let's see oh stamps of course you got to use your stamps I use stamps all the time for clay um, like this these are just little hand in the dollar bin I put little dragonflies in there you know or you know anything so use what you have search through your tools that you have already for maybe you you have some stamps that you just aren't going to use anymore for cards or something you can use them for your clay and just designate them for clay um, which is what I've done here I think these are actually in the soap for some reason this swirly one I use all the time for like water and stuff um, I think they were in the soap. no these are the soap ones these are the soap ones so I when I've seen things on clearance or honestly you guys I've been doing this a couple years now so you don't expect to have it overnight these are by what is her name I'm, my names are not uh, Lisa Pavelka these are Lisa Pavelka's texture sheets um, and I have one set of those and they sell them at Hobby Lobby too um, all right so that's texture then you can always use your cookie cutters cookie cutters I have quite a quite a nice selection but you know not a ton and they're awesome for making shapes in your clay I just use this moon for um, my my fairy door the window in my fairy door I made a moon window and then I think these are more in the cake aisle or the bigger um, let's see the bigger ones I think although no they may like this is a leaf I can't remember if these are in the clay aisle or more of like a baking aisle because they're bigger but these are definitely in the clay aisle these are just tiny little um, cookie cutters I guess but they're tiny and I have lots of little shapes here and I do I use the heart a lot I use the stars you know certain shapes I use a lot more than others and these come in sets again in the clay aisle and use a coupon and you can get 
um, cookie cutters. What else? All right. I'm going to end it by saying, see, look, this is just scrap clay, and I put it in a baggie, and I can reuse this. I keep, and this is soft as could be, this orange. It is not going to um, harden until you bake it. So the last thing I'll do is show you my oven, but uh, what else did I want to say? Okay, you can embed things in the clay. Let me see if I have an example. I'm going to go ahead and get my, this is the piece that I did with Lori Micah, and she's the queen of, well, she's very gothic, and um, her style is very, uh, what is it called, like Mexican folk art type stuff like that, but look at all these jewelry pieces, and I don't love this at all. This was just a mishmash of all the tiles I made at her class the different techniques she was teaching, and then we put it all together. And, you know, it is what it is, but um, it's no masterpiece. <laughs> but um, there's tons of stuff. Like there's um, e-beads, seed beads, chain, brads, nails, um, charms, and just focal pieces of jewelry. Uh, what are these called? Rivets, I guess, those little rivets. Um, and then we stamped into it and then put, like, this one's a good example. I'll zoom in on this one. Look at this tile. We did a little transfer. Actually, I did not do a transfer. I think I just put that, glued it to a baked piece of clay, and then put a frame around it, which is a, a jewelry piece, glued these wings on. But these are bugle beads that were embedded in the clay, and these are seed beads, and I haven't been doing a lot of this lately, and I, I need to get back to it. It's a lot of work, um, and this is, see, this is stamped on and then painted, so you can paint on polymer clay tiles, and I've done lots of videos about this stuff, um, so do yourself, well, not do yourself a favor, but if, you, if you're curious about this, look at my past videos, and you'll see I do a lot of um, I have done, I should say, several different videos about different techniques that uh, are on here. But like, see this background on here was just a stamp. We stamped onto the clay. Oh, the last thing I want to talk about is how you make it all shiny like this. Now she uses gold leafing. She gold leafs the polymer clay. This is all gold leaf. The look like the sheets of gold leafing that you can buy. Um, but another way to really um, add some color and pizzazz is with mica powders. Now, mica powders are, the only thing I've really ever used them for is polymer clay. But I, I, I know there are other uses for them. It's not embossing powder. Um, it's mica powder. And it's, it's very soft powder. And... It ha it's a metallic sheen. So if you rub it, if you rub this on the clay, it sticks to the clay and um, gives it a uh, metallic sheen. So I'll just rub over. You know what I'll do real quick? Let's do this ladybug and just rub over it. And you can see the impression while well, I'm very far away, but anyway, mica powders. These are the Pearl X and Perfect Pearls by Ranger. Um, Pearl X is by Jacquard, and um, Perfect Pearls is by Ranger, and they both work equally well. There's just different colors. Different companies make different colors, and I have several sets because that's what I do. I get a lot of stuff. Um, but like one go-to set is plenty and you'll have a beautiful um, uh, tool to use to help your clay come to life. And then there's, these are metallic rubs. This one is Inca Gold by Viva. And I know DecoArt now has um, a metallic rub. It looks very similar to this. And I haven't tried them yet. I, I forget what they're called. Um, but this is just a waxy... You just, again, you put it on your finger and it adds uh, shimmer and shine to your clay. And then this is the ones that Lori 
used in her classes. This is Leaf Gold by Rub and Buff. Oops. And it comes in this tube, and again, you just a little bit goes a long way. So this stuff will last you forever, but it adds a lot of luster and fun to your um, projects, to your clay projects. Um, boy, I mean, I'll do one one more thing, and then we got to go show my cat, my um, oven. I like to embed things in the clay, bling and jewelry pieces. Met, oops, that's my hubby. Um, metal is great. You can put metal into the um, clay and bake it, and it will come out fine. Um, gems, be careful. If they're plastic, they may melt. So when I buy, this is tulip crystals, and they're glass, so I know they're going to be fine. If they're glass, metal, um, wood would probably be fine if you had findings in wood but um, you know do that at your own at your own risk because um, I'm no expert these were very cheap little gems and they're plastic so I don't know that I would bake these in there but I, I use these as fillers in my mosaics um, all right so you can use them to embed into your clay and then I also use them as fillers like I said like here's um, this bling chain, some ball chain, but it's just on there as a filler. Oh, and I use micro beads as fillers. See, here's jewelry pieces. These are little um, spacer beads um, and stickles. You can always use stickles, which is just a glitter glue, and I just make little marks with that on here at the end after everything's all done, um, and then I, I put stickles on here just for a little shine okay so I'm gonna go away and come back downstairs at my oven all right I'll be right back okay so this is my oven it is by Oster it is a toaster oven and it's fairly large this is my old one still works but it was starting to spike the heat was inconsistent and I was burning stuff so I got a new one that was a bit bigger I mean looking at it now it's not a ton bigger inside but um, I haven't burnt anything in this oven and I got it at Target I also have an interior thermometer that I put in the oven to make sure that the temperature is what I set it to because this isn't digital or anything it has basically see if the lighting is terrible there we go there's the dial that sets the temperature and it is not it goes by 50 degrees so right now for 275 it's actually set at about two looks like 250 something ish but when I um, Put the thermometer in it it shows up as um, the right temperature and it's set on bake and then here's my um, timer and that's it Let me turn that off um, I have this metal this is a um, what is it tin foil tent and I started doing this because I burned a few things but like I said this oven I haven't had an issue with but I still tent things, meaning like when I put the item in the oven, and I, I don't always use the um, tray. I'll just put my tile right on this uh, rack, and then I just lay this tin foil on top like that. Kind of tent the piece in there, and it protects it from getting scorched. Um, and everything comes out just fine. So um, you're going to need an oven, and, and I say that because supposedly there are polymers in the clay that, and it smells, like that's why it's in the basement too. I, I bake it down here because, there, I and I also open a window and create, you can vent, um, ventilate the area because it, it does, it smells funny, and supposedly whatever that is gets 
on your oven so if you're baking it in your in your oven that you're going to cook food in it's probably not a good idea again i'm not an expert but that is what i've heard all right so if you're more if you want more details on that google it into your search engine and i'm sure there'll be other videos about baking clay and um what not to do and type stuff like that all right and my light is still on there we go um, all right, you guys, I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm going to make a playlist as well of my polymer clay videos. So um, get out your clay and start playing. All right, thanks for watching.